Hi, I'm Ken Adams and I teach a few different courses for the biology department. They include General Biology 1, which is a freshman level course that introduces students to fundamental concepts of cell biology, molecular biology, and genetics. I also teach Cell Biology, which is a sophomore level course intended to give students a more in-depth understanding of the molecules that make up cells, as well as how those molecules interact with each other to carry out the complex processes of cellular life. I also teach two upper level electives that are designed for juniors and seniors. The first one is called cell signaling, and the second one is called the molecular basis of neurodegeneration. In terms of my research interests, I consider myself a cell molecular biologist, which is to say that I'm very interested in understanding how cells of humans and other mammals work, both in the context of normal, healthy individuals, as well as in disease, for example, Alzheimer's disease. To investigate those interests, we grow a variety of different cell types in the lab, and we conduct weekly experiments to better understand how they work. Now, when I say we grow cells and we conduct experiments, I'm referring to the fact that I have a team of undergraduate student researchers in my lab that work with me each semester, and we together carry out research projects to pursue our collective interests. When students join my lab, they spend the first several weeks learning how to grow mammalian cells and culture, while also shadowing me or more senior students in the lab while we carry out more complicated experiments on cells. As new students develop independence in maintaining cells and culture, they then start learning additional techniques and using them to conduct experiments and move our projects forward. The specific techniques we use vary quite a bit, but they entail things like using molecules called antibodies to track where a specific protein is located in the cell, whether its location or its levels change in response to different conditions, or whether the protein gets chemically modified in some meaningful way. We also use a variety of different DNA-based techniques through which we can, for example, introduce specific proteins of interest into cells to determine what those proteins do and how they impact cell behavior. Alternatively, we can use DNA-based techniques to modify cellular genomes by CRISPR technology, which has recently taken hold as a very powerful tool in the world of research. One of the things that I find most inspiring about undergraduate research is that it provides students the opportunity to integrate, deepen, and apply their understanding of concepts they learn through coursework in a way that is extremely difficult to mimic in a traditional lecture lab course. Students in my lab interact with me one-on-one -on, -one on a near daily basis, and they conduct experiments on a near weekly basis, sometimes independently and sometimes as part of a group. Undergraduate researchers in my lab also gather as a group with me for a weekly lab meeting, during which we either discuss ongoing projects in the lab, new experimental data that we recently generated, or we discuss research articles that were recently published. So I think it's through our group effort and common commitment to our research projects that we build a real sense of community and students gain a greater insight to the actual practice of science. My goal is that that opportunity will equip students with the skills, knowledge, and excitement for science that will propel them into their next step, whether that be a graduate program, job within the biotech industry, or some other passion that they discover within themselves. If you would like to learn more about me, please visit my website. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in class.